Married at First Sight Australia, episode 26 and 27. So we have our remaining six couples going on their final dates in this series. But I'm only going to touch on one or two. Starting with Belinda and Patrick. Now, Patrick was the one organising the date, of course. As he said, I'm not a romantic. Well, he seems to have started off well. Not sure what was in the box. I was expecting it to be a dress, and so was Belinda, looking at how fancy the box was. But when Belinda did open the box, what we saw was a T-shirt. I'm thinking, okay, what's he got planned? But she actually liked it. I wasn't too sure she would, but she actually liked it. She's hoping that they have matching T-shirts and that they're twinning. Yeah, that's the word she used, twinning. But she's, she's excited. She's excited. She turned around and said, her being her, Patrick's going to know whether she likes this or not because she can't, she can't hide it. Her face says it all if she's not into something. So he's going to know. But she's liking it so far. And as she said, if the day goes accordingly, we haven't gone all the way. But you never know. If all goes well today, this could be the day. That's what she said. That's what she said. This girl is not playing. In the box, there was also a card that said she'd be picked up in an hour. And what we saw was a white limo. A white limo. Oh my goodness me. Well, it felt a bit like Pretty Woman, this did. So what we saw was her arriving at one stadium, not knowing why she's there. And behind her, we saw the marching band, some cheerleaders. Yeah, all of that behind her. And the minute they started playing the music, she turned around and was in shock to say, oh my God, is this for me? Wow. Yeah, she had that face. So as the band was playing and the cheerleaders dancing, we saw Patrick appear from behind one of the musicians. And he was sort of dancing. I'm not too sure what he was doing. One or two cartwheels come out of him. I thought, oh, Patrick, what are we doing? What are we doing? But she seemed to like it. She was also jumping up and down. You just needed to give her some pom-poms. She would have joined in. She looked like one of them anyway. Yep, these two had a fun little time just jumping up and down and giggling the whole nine yards. And then it finished. And then she came over and gave him a big hug. And then she expressed to him how amazing it was, how awesome it was. It was the best. I can't believe you thought of something like this. Yeah, that's where she went. She was excited. She loved it. Ah, dear. Yeah, not my thing, but it works for her. As long as she enjoyed it, that's all that matters. So Patrick had already got off to a good start. Looking at this, he's off to a good start. We then saw the second phase of Patrick's surprise. This guy's rolling out the red carpet today, believe me. The second surprise was a penthouse suite. With the views of, where are they? I don't know what part of Australia, but they've got the views. They can see the whole city. Yep. This guy ain't playing. This guy is not playing. Belinda's absolutely gobsmacked. Running around the apartment, onto the balcony, looking over the city. Doesn't know what to do with herself. And then you see another surprise on the bed. He's only going and bought her a black dress. And he bought her a bracelet on top of it. Woo! Patrick! For someone that doesn't know about romance and says he isn't romantic, you're putting a lot of these people to shame. I didn't think you had it in you. Well, 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 well. Keep going. Next you saw Patrick put on a dinner for her. I don't think he made it. But 
the evening was very romantic. He was dressed in his wedding suit and she was in the black dress he had bought her. Now that black dress looked wicked on her. Really nice. She looked so different. As Patrick said, you look so different. And she did. She owned that dress. Now that's how you style. That's how you wear a dress. I think you need to get Patrick to do a lot of your styling for you. Because he did a great job. She looked beautiful. She did. And then she had red lipstick on top of it. That popped. Oh dear. Yeah. So that's a great start to the evening. Absolutely beautiful. You then saw these two have a nice romantic meal. And then we got down to the nitty gritty. Patrick asked Belinda how she was feeling. And she says over the past week or two, her feelings have grown. She's starting to feel things. That's what she said. She's getting butterflies in her stomach. This warm, fuzzy feeling. That's how she described it. She doesn't really know what it means. She never felt this way before. And then Patrick turns around and says, do you think you could be falling in love with me? Or falling for me? Something like that, he says. And she says, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I've just never felt this way before. I could be. Something along those lines, she said. Oh, this girl. She's naive, but I like her. <laughs> She's so naive, but I like her. This is all new to her. Very new to her. But hearing this has made Patrick feel much more at ease because he was starting to think, is she really into me? Even though we show a lot, each other a lot of affection, is she really into me? Because I can't see her jumping my bones and instigating things and so forth. So that was his nagging doubts in the back of his head. But hearing what she just said now has made him feel much better. It was shortly after that conversation that he asked to kiss her. He wasn't too sure because she had lipstick on. So he asked her permission. Can I kiss you? She's thinking, oh, would it smudge? She wasn't too sure. She wasn't too sure. But anyway, they eventually kissed. They ended off the dinner on a nice note. With a nice smooch. What we saw next came as no surprise to me. It was working up to this. The two of them in a bath, nice bubble bath with champagne, petals on the floor, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Patrick pulled out all the stops today. He was not playing. He romanced her. He properly romanced her. So now they're in the bath, kissy cuddles, having nice romantic talks, kissy kissy. And it ended off with them locking lips him slamming the door in front of the camera to say yeah now it's our time no more no more cameras now yeah so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens next yeah i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure we're gonna hear something has happened tomorrow i'm sure we will anyway who's next Bryce and Melissa. Now these two, for their final day, are going to Canberra, which is Bryce's hometown. Yes, Bryce's hometown. Now this is going to give Melissa the opportunity to find out whether there's any truth to the rumours. Because they'll be going to his hometown, meeting up with some of his friends as well. And let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. But... The way I see it, I don't care. When it comes to friends, his friends are not going to drop him in it. Not in front of you. Not going to happen. Doesn't matter how much she may try to grill them about this so-called girlfriend. They're not going to tell her shite. I'm telling you that now. So fast forward... Bryce and Melissa finally arrive at their destination. They went to lunch with Ellie, I think who he works with, Michaela, someone he's known for 10 years, and Jason, as he says, you always need to have the gay best friend. 
That's how he described them. Anyway, so they finally arrived. Everybody greeted everybody. Yeah, the usual. They were then asked, I think it was Jason that asked the question, the gay best friend. How's it going? Yeah, that's what he said. And they, yeah, talked about they've had highs, they've had lows. It's going well. As Bryce said, he never thought he'd meet anybody on there, to be honest. But it's turned out better than he thought. Him and Melissa have got on very well. They've faced a lot of things whilst being there. And that's where the question came. What's happened? And this is where Melissa took over the conversation. She was like, where do I begin? Yep. That's how she started the conversation. Where do I begin? So she started by saying about Bryce has had a lot of fallouts, let's say, with a lot of the group. A lot of confrontations have happened with individuals as well as couples. Yeah, continuously, this keeps happening. And there was one point where he threw a a glass of water over somebody. Yeah. And then she went on to say that also on top of it, one of the wives was saying that he has a so-called girlfriend outside of the experiment. This is where everybody started to fidget. This is what I noticed. This is where I saw everybody start fidgeting. His friends, one was sucking on her straw, picked up her glass and started sucking on her straw. Jason was doing the same. Bryce was twiddling with his ring like he always does when he's nervous about something. Oh yeah, I watch for those things. I don't play. So Melissa started telling a story about how a friend of Bryce was coming into the city and Bryce told him to buy a gift to send back to the girlfriend. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. I've lost track of that story now. It's tiring. But Bryce continued from where Melissa left off, telling his friends of what this so-called girl, which is Beck, had said. But at the same time, I'm looking at the expressions of his friends and I'm thinking, hmm, the two girls aren't really saying much. Jason's the one asking all the questions. Yeah, I'm not going to say any more on that story. But the next thing that happened was Bryce got off his seat and said, I'm going to leave you guys to talk. So now what you've got is Melissa with his three friends. So let's see what happens next. So what you saw was Melissa asking the friends whether there was any truth to the rumour. Rather than answer that question, they turned around and said, what has he told you? She told them what he had told her about meeting this girl on Tinder. They'd been dating or whatever for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And before he come on the show, they had split. Something like that. Yeah. They all seem to be in agreement with that because Blondie, I think that's Michaela, she turned around and said, yeah, that's true. But with the other two, Jason and Ellie, they didn't have much to say. Well, I can't remember Jason saying anything, but Ellie was sort of stuttering. She said, oh, if, if I knew anything, I'd tell you. Yeah, but she was really stuttering to even answer that question. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe her. And then when Jason was asked in front of the camera later, the producer asked, is there any truth to the rumour? And he says, no. And then he turned around and said, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He seems to know Bryce. For him to say, I don't know. It wasn't a firm no. He said no, first of all. And then shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, he told me everything I need to know, just by that move. It was not long after that that Bryce came back to the group. They chit-chatted for a little while longer. Then Bryce said to his friends that he's going to go now because he wants to show Melissa around Canberra. So they departed. And then what happened next was the camera was still rolling. The mics were still on. But at the same time, the friends didn't realise that they were being recorded. 
So the conversation that took place next, they were unaware we were listening. And just to add, I believe I've got the names back to front. Ellie is the one with the blonde hair. Michaela is the dark haired girl. Yeah. And then Jason, we know who Jason is. The conversation went like this. Jason said to Ellie, do you think he's lied to her? And Ellie's reply was, yep. That's what she said. And then Jason came back to say, yep, no doubt. And again, Ellie said, yep. No hesitation whatsoever. And she continued the conversation by saying, because the gift thing is true. Yes, that's what she said. The gift thing is true. And Jason's reply was, oh shit. But I think he swore actually. I think he put, probably put an F word in there. Because they blanked that out. So all this time, Bryce was lying. Blatantly lying. Barefaced lie. Did he not think he'd get caught out? I don't get people that lie. As I said before, what's done in the dark always comes to light. What we saw next was Bryce and Melissa, well, Bryce take Melissa for a picnic. And then they started discussing what happened amongst the friends. Melissa was saying she didn't get any answers. There was no definitive no that this so-called girlfriend existed. Yeah, there wasn't a definitive no. So she still got questions in her head whether the rumour is true. And that's what she was telling Bryce. And Bryce was turning around and say, oh, I don't know why they didn't just say no. I don't know what they were thinking. Why didn't they just say she didn't exist? That's really what he was trying to say. Yeah. And then he started talking about how he was falling for her and how he felt for, as in Melissa, that is. Just to try to change the subject. I think that's what he was doing. Yeah. But Melissa, at the end of it, was still a little sceptical about whether this rumour is true or not. Because when she was talking to the camera, the way she said it was, I don't want to be five months into this, five months down the line, and find out that these rumours were true. She's not looking to be humiliated all over again. Yep, that's what she said. So we're still up in the air, whether this is true or not. We're still up in the air. Oh, I can't believe we're still talking about this subject. It's, it's driving me absolutely mad. Oh, dear me. Anyway, that was the end of their date. Coming back to Belinda and Patrick. We find out the following morning that these two have consummated their relationship. Yes, they've finally done the deed. They've consummated the relationship. Thank God for that. It was a long time coming. But we got there in the end. We got there in the end. Belinda's smiling her head off. Patrick's happy. Everyone's content. I'm sure she's going to share the news later. I'm sure she's going to share the news with the rest of the girls later. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens next. Just going to quickly touch on Beck and Jake. Not going to talk about their final date. I'm talking about her dog. Beck's dog that's sick. So we saw her go off for a few days because her dog's sick. She's come back. She gave Jake a warm welcome. That's a first. That there is a first. That was more heartfelt what I saw there. Throughout the whole of the series. But I do question at the same time whether it was really for Jake or whether she was just missing her dog. Yes, that's the way I read that. As I said, I'm not living on hope. Not for these two. They are not going to work. End of story. The last date I'm going to talk about is with Alana and Jason. Now, these two are still living in separate apartments, so they haven't quite made up yet. Uh, this relationship, the back and forth, the breakup, the makeup. 
I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody tells me or what anybody says. This is not going to last. But anyway, what we saw was Jason dressed up, looking very smart. I will say that. Came knocking on Alana's door and presented her with a nice gift. He's taken her out somewhere, not sure where, but she was happy to see him nevertheless. So he presented her with a gift. It happened to be a bottle of perfume. She liked the gift. She was all giggly and smiley. Yeah. And then one last thing that Jason did say before going on their date was, today we're not going to talk about anybody within the experiment. Not Bryce, not Melissa, not no one. It's going to be about just you and me. That's what he said. That was the rules of today. Of course she agreed. Big smile on her face thinking, yeah, we're not going to talk about them. So we're just going to have to wait and see where they go next. To be straightforward, their date was very simple. It was lunch or dinner by the harbour in one restaurant. And as they said, they weren't talking about anybody else but their relationship. They mentioned about the back and forth, the making up, the falling out and other people coming into their relationship. But as Jason says, things will be different on the outside. Mm, you sure about that? I'm not too sure. I think you'll be that person that would always have that friend that will come in between your relationship. You come across that way for someone that you've only known for a short time, Bryce. You come across like that guy. So I'm very sceptical. They continue to talk about one another going to each other's homes. So that will mean them travelling to see each other. I believe she lives in the Gold Coast and he lives in Perth. But as for the long-term plans, there wasn't really any long-term plans. It's very much see how it goes. And if all goes well, it'd be more likely her moving towards him, as in moving to his area or moving in with him. Because I saw him smiling when she said that. He didn't suggest the idea in regards to moving to her. Yeah, I'm sceptical. I'm sceptical. That's what I got from this talk here. Yeah, not much else was talked about. And that was the end of their date. Short and sweet. I can't say it anymore. I can't see it working. So this is where I'm going to leave it. If you like what you heard, please like, comment and subscribe. Till next time.